Hello, everyone. I don't know if someone is here already. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah, hello. Hi. hello. Nice. Welcome to Expo Lingua. Welcome to a new meeting. Um, today is all about German, the German language, the German culture. Um, and I'm the, um, yeah, the host today, apparently. So I'm um, very happy to do that. And I'm here with very interesting people. So um, the meeting will be in English today. Maybe you can write us in the chat what is your language and where you're from. That will be very interesting. And yes, I would say we start with a little introduction round. Um, maybe, maybe I start and then I choose the next person and the next person can choose the next person. So we go through that everyone has a few minutes. Um, my name is Steffi. I'm from, jo oh, hello. Yeah, Katja, super. <laughs> So the idea is maybe you can um, tell your name, your channels, if you have some channels or where people can find you and your favorite hot beverage. So your favorite hot drink. So my name is Steffi. Um, you can find me on several social media platforms. Um, my name there is Lerne Deutsch. I teach German and my favorite hot beverage is a cappuccino. Michael, do you want to continue? <laughs> Yeah, I already forgot the questions, but I'm Michael and uh, I am a German teacher by trade for 20 years now. And uh, I've created a platform called Smarter German where you can learn German without a tutor. Um, I retired from tutoring, so I digitalize all my knowledge and uh, share it with the world. I live in Berlin since 20 years. My son was born here and uh, finally I got him out of the house, so he's gone. And uh, I'm also considering leaving Berlin at one point, at least with one foot. And I, of course, also love coffee, uh, good barista coffee. Uh, yeah, warms my heart. Nice. <laughs> Do you want to choose the next person? Oh, forgive me, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Sophia and I live in Berlin too, but I'm from Ukraine originally. So German is not my native language, but I teach German in Russian for Russian speaking people. And you can find me on TikTok and Instagram. My name is deutsch.mit or deutsch.mit. <laughs> and my favorite hot drink is cappuccino as well. Steffi. Nice. I well. feel, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Anya, where do you come from? All right. So I was uh, born and raised in Germany. My, my name is Anya. Um, uh, I've left Germany actually like 13 years ago. I lived in many different countries for the past seven years in Mexico. Um, I'm the founder of Zendoa Languages. Um, we actually have a couple of languages, but our focus is definitely on, on German and very interesting. It's So we focus a lot on the Spanish uh, speaking German learners. So everyone from Latin America and Spain. Um, I see here in the chat, there's a couple of people from uh, Mexico. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, and yeah, my favorite beverage, I'd say, okay, I also really like coffee. I actually have a coffee right here, but to change this a little bit, I really like Glühwein as well. Oh, so really like <laughs> I really enjoy a very good Glühwein. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, okay. Next person. Um, I'd say Juliane. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Juliane. I'm from Berlin and I'm currently living in Berlin as well after having lived in several other countries as well. Um, and I'm the person behind german to go So I have my own platform, german to gocom And you can also find me on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, even though I've taken a break from the social channels for a while, but I'm starting to um, be more active on them now. So you can look forward to more materials in the future. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my favorite hot beverage is a latte macchiato. <laughs> oh, also nice. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. How about um, you, Yijin? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, it's my turn, I think. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yitz. Uh, I'm from Turkey. I live in Bonn for five years. I studied here in Germany. I make videos for YouTube about daily life in Germany. And sometimes I give tips for German and German exams uh, in Turkish. But I have to say that I have friends here who make this job even more wonderful. I thank you all. I am following almost everyone here. I learned a lot of from you. <laughs> My followers know me as, <clears throat> sorry, as the person who said, please learn German in every video. 
uh, I always recommend you to my followers um, what I do. And at our small family business, we advise candidates who would like to study and work in Germany on their diploma recognition procedures and applications. This is multi-level process. And um, I think everyone is very, very, very successful and good here. I am proud to be in the same organization with you. Cool, thank you so much. So I have prepared some questions for you and I would say you were last now. So let's start with you with a round of questions. And for everyone that's watching right now, you are welcome to ask your questions in the chat. Um, maybe we have enough time and we can answer some of your questions. Uh, that would be very nice because um, we want to, of course, uh, yeah, answer your questions um, if you're here. Okay, so my question for you is, um, you said that your focus is on the German culture, less on the language. So how is your approach? So how do you um, teach culture on social media platforms? Do you show the environment or how do you do that? For um, Yeet. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah, sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I always might make my videos based on the questions that occur to me, actually. Mm -hmm. How should I choose my university? Which documents are required? What is the difference between a work visa and blue card? Um, how do I open a blocked account? Uh, what is the keywords for the university applications? What is the cost of living for a student in Germany? How should I prepare my uh, motivational letter? I actually, I'm directly prepared content in German, actually, and okay. this is my um, area, I can say. Very nice. Yeah, I think many of us can share this. Um, like the, one of the biggest inspiration is that we get the questions, right? And we try to answer them. Very nice. Okay, I have a question for Michael and Anya. And the question is, what are you specialized on? So what is, like for, you both teach the German language. So what is the most interesting for you? What are you specialized on? Like if there is something, if you can tell so. And I would say we start with Anya because ladies first. <laughs> All right, sure. Um, yeah, so I guess from a language perspective, um, what I am specialized on is, well, um, helping people uh, to learn German, but from their perspective, from their mother tongue, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, in, in, in this case, our biggest audience, what we focus on is all Latin America. So what we do is that we explain it in Spanish. And to me personal, this is, it, it's very special for me because Spanish is not my mother tongue, but it's one of my strongest languages. And Nelson Mandela, um, he said it once, he said, you talk to it, you talk to a man in another language and, and you talk to his head and you talk to a man when you talk to a man in his language then you talk to his heart and i think that's mm -hmm. very 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 true so that's why i really enjoy especially for beginner levels um using the languages that i know um and um yeah um helping them to learn german from their perspective from their mother tongue um so that's one thing and then the second thing is also what I specialize on with it, but it's not just me, Deutsch mit Saloa, we are a team of, um, yeah, a couple of people, um, uh, Mexicans and uh, Germans are part of the team. Um, and so what we focus on is also what we, so we understand that our, the people who learn German with us, their main reason is never to just learn German. So learning German might be a tool for them, to achieve in the end a higher goal, right? So at least in our case, that there might be people, of course, who who might learn German for the pure love of languages or um, whatever reason. But in our case, it's usually because they want better job opportunities or because they might have family in Germany or something like that. So what we do is, in addition to helping them with the German language, we connect them with companies. Um, as many of you might know, there is a huge um, labor shortage in in germany um, in different areas um, healthcare industry for example and so what we do is that we help those people who learn german to connect with companies in germany so these are the two things that i focus on i'd say and yeah michael how about you 
I'm not sure whether I specialize on anything, uh, to be honest. Um, I know where my passion lies. So we offer courses from A1 to C1, and uh, there's no teacher involved. I might have mentioned that. Uh, so my, 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 my passion is to enable you to learn on your own, to be autonomous, because that's the whole goal of learning a language, so that you can live your life without outside help, right? So and that needs to be reflected in the learning process. And what I especially love is people with problems. So if there's someone who's really struggling, especially also with motivation, um, we have uh, beautiful courses and tools for this. And uh, I often jump in personally. Uh, I don't charge for that because I'm, I'm really interested in how people learn and why they struggle. Uh, I learn a lot from that and uh, all the findings I put into my courses. So it's, it's a pretty um, holistic course. So it includes psychology, learning psychology, it's a course for people or this i i'm interested in people who understand that learning language is a lot of work and uh, work is nothing bad and work is actually something really rewarding and, and satisfying if done right right the only thing that's frustrating is useless work or redundant work and um, let's say i specialize on making redundancy redundant um, nice. yeah more or less and uh, yeah, I, I like to take things apart until it's atomic structure and then put it back together and make it even look more beautiful. So the learning techniques, I, I look at the learning process and I simplify it and make it more enjoyable. It's like driving a car. You can ride a horse. It's quite painful. A nice Mercedes, right? You know, it's, it's like floating on the autobahn. So I, I create autobahns or Mercedes and autobahns and you will just enjoy the Fahrvergnügen, if you know that word. Um, that's, that's how I could put it into images. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Michael. OK, um, for Sonia um, or Sophia, I um, would give you the questions from the chat. So because someone asked, so Sophie Soria asked, hi, a question for Sophia. Could you elaborate on the beginning of your content creating journey? What motivates you? What did you do? And how was the response of the audience? You are so inspiring. <laughs> Hey, thank you. Um, I started learning German at school and everyone used to hate it. And I wanted to share my love to this language. That's why I started my Instagram account. And when I started it, I had like A2 or B1 level in German. So I taught German while I was still learning it. And a few months ago, I passed the C2 exam. Goethe C2 and wow. um, the people who follow me they were inspired of me because I showed my journey how I learned the language how I allow it and I I teach the colloquial German language the German slang because you can't really find it on the internet and as I'm young and I have a lot of young German friends <laughs> they share um, different slang words with me and then I post it on social media and uh, I also teach uh, the German pronunciation because uh, I love that feeling when when the Muttersprachler the native speakers say that I have no accent that's why I teach especially slang and pronunciation <laughs> Very Thank nice. You. And you teach the pronunciation in Russian? Or? Yeah, in, yeah, in Russian, only in Russian, because I think it doesn't really make sense to learn everyone uh, in every language because every it doesn't matter. Like, I know what Russian speaker say wrong, what mistakes mm -hmm. they do, but I don't really understand what mistakes Spanish speakers do or American uh, English speakers do. That's why I do it only in Russian and for Russian speaking people. Nice. Yeah. And uh, very successful as well. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, Juliana, I have a question for you as well. Um, what do your students struggle with the most? So is there a topic that they always say, um, yeah, this is so difficult, we will never learn it, or like, yeah, maybe you have a topic that you can, yeah. <laughs> Well, what I always hear what students struggle with is the declensions, the adjective declensions, and this is especially difficult if students have learned German somewhere else before, like just with an app or so, and they were missing the structure to really learn the language step by step. 
progressively. So it's it's really hard to get rid of these mistakes, um, something that they learned in a wrong way or something they didn't take the time to really concentrate on, to do exercises, to really internalize it. So it's it's very difficult to, to get rid of that type of mistakes. So I pay attention to um, like uh, all already introducing, for example, the adjective endings right at the beginning because people just want to use adjectives when they speak. And if they don't know how, they will just try something out, invent something and say it wrongly. So I prefer to, um, to tell them right from the beginning. And um, another thing is, yeah, the, the, um, the verb that is being placed at the end um, of subordinate clauses. This is also a topic that people struggle with. And um, yeah, another, another thing would be the, um, um, the to overcome the hesitations when speaking. Mm -hmm. So some students know the theory but it's really hard for them to apply it when they're actually speaking. So I always say it's very important to, to actually speak because then only will you notice, um, yeah, if you really master this topic or not, if, if you can um, use it in everyday life in your language. Yeah, <laughs> so it's important yeah. to speak and to put everything in practice actually, not just um, listen to things passively, but also apply the language, yeah. <laughs> Very nice, thank you. Aurélie uh, is also writing, you are correct. Du hast recht, Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> nice, cool. I have a question from Patrice Martin um, in the chat. The first one is for Deutsch with Maria, but she isn't here today, so I don't know if they can, you can do any tests with her or not. Um, but the second question is, um, how do you define the levels? Because I can express myself, but I'm still ashamed that I still made some basic errors. Does any one of you have an answer for that? How do you define the levels? Yes, you're Michael. <laughs> well, I'm not sure whether I define the levels. There is a kind of norm called the Common European Frame of Res Reference, which you can look up on Wikipedia. And they have a pretty vague description of what each level means, what you should be capable of doing. It's a bit difficult to measure. Um, if you teach German for a few years, you get a feeling for more or less what level they are. But, you know, a good A2 might be as good as a bad B1. So there is a gray area between the levels for sure. And um, the question is really, is, is your aim? I understand we work with these levels yeah, to take exams and to, to be able to study. But if you don't need that, I wouldn't worry too much about these things. I would just get started. and, and just get going yeah because um, yeah the, the the levels are nice as an orientation and and they're economically um they sound they make sense yeah but um yeah so i don't define them there is books out there there have been experts that have put their heads together and come up with a curriculum which we can all look up in the internet and uh, of course i uh, orient all my work or not all my work my courses on that and i i guess my colleagues as well Nice, thank you. Okay, then I would say, let's play a little game. I have, well, we have prepared a little game for you. Um, okay, okay, the game is everyone needs a little paper or something, or something you can cover the camera with. And I will ask you some questions. If the answer, so everyone will come, uh, cover the camera. If the answer is yes, you take the paper away. If the answer is no, you keep the paper in front of the camera. And now I will also need the help from everyone watching because I have prepared some questions, but it would be way more fun if you ask some questions as well in the chat so we can answer your questions as well. Cool, Michael. <laughs> okay, no, but let's work. give it, yeah, let's give it a try. So we all cover our camera. Nice, Sonia. <laughs> so the first question is, are you a native German speaker? If the answer is yes, you take it away. If the answer is no, you keep it there. Okay, okay. I would say, okay, Sonia, we know your native language is Russian. You can also take it away now because <laughs> you already mentioned it. And Yid, you said um, it's Turkish. Um, okay, nice. Okay, that was a quick warm up round. 
let's do the second one and everyone ask your questions in the chat now is the time <laughs> the second question is do you speak more than two languages fluently okay nice Juliane, do you want to tell us about it? Which languages do you speak? Okay, so I learned uh, English and French at school and I spent uh, yeah, quite some time abroad as well. So I managed to, to learn them really flu fluently. And um, I also speak Portuguese because my husband is Brazilian. So we usually speak Portuguese at home. Amazing, wow, that's so cool. How about you, Anya? Yeah, so um, I guess that's for everyone here as well, right? When, when can you say that you really know a language? <laughs> so in terms of uh, languages that I've studied, it's, it's a list of like, I think 13 or 14, but I don't speak them all fluently. So the, the languages that I use um, on a daily basis, that would be um, uh, apart from German, uh, English, French, Spanish, and uh, Portuguese as well. Wow. And then I have a couple of other languages where I let's say I, I could get by um I can have a basic conversation um like Italian uh Swedish uh Nahuatl which is an indigenous language from Mexico um then I have a couple of more um unfortunately so I've learned a couple of Asian languages but unfortunately I can't hold a conversation in those languages yet <laughs> not yet <laughs> <laughs> wow but that's very very impressive how many languages are this in total I don't know. So I get this question all the time, right? And I always feel like, um, so I mean, the ones that I really use every day uh, for, and then I would say like fluent level um, six, um, and um, then maybe two more where, where I would say like, okay, yeah, that it's not far from getting to a fluent level. I would just need a couple of weeks, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's always hard to say a number and it sounds always right. like, wow so impressive right but honestly it's not i'm not smarter than anyone here <laughs> really not it's it's just a, a a huge passion that's it very nice and mila is say is asking a very interesting question which one do you prefer what's your favorite language so i used to say french uh for many years and it's still i guess uh my heart language because uh, it was the first one after german that i spoke really um fluently in the end um, and I guess everyone who has learned another language you, you know that, that the language that you speak fluently and I think Sophia said it right when you when people uh, compliment you on the pronunciation of a language that is not your native language and you feel really proud of yourself right when people tell you like oh my god you sound like a native speaker and, and <laughs> yeah so I guess that's the reason why I used to say French and um, I think for the last year um, it has turned a little bit into Nahuatl just because it's an indigenous language and that really opened my eyes, my perspective on so many things in the world. So yeah, I'd say now it's Nahuatl. Nice. And I see that we also have some French speakers watching because Mila wrote Merveilleux, I think it's pronounced like that. And Mila yeah, wrote, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oui, vive le français. <laughs> Very nice. Um, okay, Yid, uh, you had the paper still uh, in front of the camera, right? Yes. So <laughs> do you plan to learn any other language? Yes, Spanish. I'm really interested to, to learn Spanish, but I, I'm still <laughs> learning, uh, actually, I think so, German. German is a huge mm -hmm. language. Yes, I am. I make videos about German and German exams. And uh, okay, we have certificates and so but german is a really hook language um i am in love with german i need uh, more time with german but mm -hmm. in, a, in a few months maybe i will start to learn spanish wow that's super cool i am actually also learning spanish right now it's one of my passions as well i think it's a beautiful language um yeah but like anya said like it depends on uh like are you fluent or not, right? Like I, I'm definitely not fluent in Spanish. I had French in school, but I'm not fluent in French, but in English, and I'm also studying Hebrew, a very different language. Um, Patrice Martin wrote, Anya, formidable la connaissance de tout de ces langues. <laughs> yeah, sehr schön. Okay, ich würde sagen, wir gehen da, uh, yeah, we continue with the next question. So may we cover the camera again? 
And everyone watching, please don't be shy. Ask your questions as well. Now is your chance. So the next question is, did you grow up in Germany? Okay, Michael, where did you grow up? At the countryside uh, in a very little tiny village near Osnabrück. I spent the first 20 years of my life there, which was very protected and calm and loving. Nice. So when did you move to Berlin? 20 years ago, when my son was uh, making an appearance. Nice. <laughs> very nice. And someone actually, um, Sophie, asked in the chat, do you offer online courses? So maybe each of you that have a course can or sell something can write it in the chat if people are interested in learning interested learning with you so they can find you online um if you have a link or the name of that you can share it there um okay how about sophia where did you grow up i grew up in this tiny village in ukraine uh, near chernihiv it's the northern part of ukraine maybe you know kiev <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's nearby. It's uh, the capital of Ukraine. And mm -hmm. then I moved to Chernihiv, to the biggest city in our area. And then I moved to Berlin two years ago. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I'm actually born and raised in Berlin. So I think many of us are in are from Berlin, actually. That's very nice and uh, also not so common usually, right? So very nice. Okay, um, any other questions in the chat? I don't think so. So let's continue with the next one. The next question is, ah, it's a bit about the language. Um, maybe I explain quick. The question is, um, how do you, what do you think about the shadowing method? For everyone that doesn't know what it is, the shadowing method is a method that believes in um, that you first listen to what the natives say, you um, copy what they say, and then um, afterwards you focus more on the grammar. So you first just really look at them, you kind of shadow them, you copy them, and then uh, focus more on the grammar. So let's phrase it for yes or no. Do you think the shadowing method is useful? If the answer is yes, take it away. If you think no, don't take it away. Okay, almost 50-50. Um, let's, Juliana, maybe. Sophia has not decided. <laughs> okay, so I think it's um, especially useful for pronunciation. Um, I have uh, lots of practice um, sentences and, and exercises on my website to teach pronunciation um, because it helps a lot with rhythm and the, the melody of the, um, the language. So um, students can yeah, listen to the to the original uh, recording and then just try to um, yeah imitate that, and so yeah get a feeling for for what the language actually uh, sounds like. And then it's good to still have somebody also who could yeah tell you if you're actually really <laughs> like um, imitating what the person says or if there are some things that you might want to adjust maybe at the beginning. But um, yeah, very soon you will be able to, to feel, uh, hear the difference yourself, especially if you, if you record yourself and then play one, um, one audio after the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice I've seen great progresses with my students uh, for pronunciation with it. <laughs> nice. Um, how about you, Sophia? You were a bit torn apart. You had the paper or the camera um... half covered. <laughs> Because it's 50-50, I think it's useful for pronunciation and the melody of language, but it's naturally useful for the grammar. Mm -hmm. And Michael didn't uncover the camera, so the answer is no. Why is that? Uh, it's a very challenging and demanding technique. Uh, so if you are a higher level, sure, go for it. And the problem with such complex techniques is uh, they have to be done right. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you might feel overwhelmed pretty quickly yeah some people don't experience that but in my experience it's quite overwhelming um, if you don't know what you're doing there um, it's, it's powerful you know, but you know with great power right comes great responsibility so right. um lovely technique and i i also 
also next year will create something for beginners um, that will make use of the principles of shadow speaking for sure. Okay, yeah. nice, interesting. And Anya was nodding, you share the opinion? Yes, so I think, first of all, when you, when you first said shattering, I was like, I thought about boxing because we do that. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second, <laughs> are we still talking about languages? No, but of course, I, I know that in languages too. Um, and I just think it's, um, especially as adults, right? And German actually does make sense, a lot of sense. Um, and so as adults, we learn in a way that is just not like a kid. So whenever someone also says like, oh yeah, you can just pick up a kid's book um, and, and learn the language. And I was like, mm, no, I would honestly not recommend this. But what I mean was that is in the end, um, we need also, we want to understand things in the world because we are adults and that's how we work. And, and so I think by just copying from native speakers, it's nice because you get the feeling and I think it's also very important, um, but just doing it, I, I don't think that this leads to a lot of success, um, at least not for me, because I really mm -hmm. focus on logic in general. So yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, I think also that the shadowing method can be a nice tool, but just by itself. And Michael said it very nicely. Um, if you don't do it correctly, it maybe don't help you that much. Um, how about Yid? You said yes correctly? Yes, I just tried and it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, the, um, of course, there are lots of methods. It depends on you, how you learn, but I think this is how we learned our mother language this is how children learn it's the way the babies learn the language i think it's uh, very simple and useful That's mm -hmm. nice thank you and george um ask in the chat does anyone focus on children learning german does anyone has experience here No, but I, uh, well, yes and no. I worked with teenagers once 20 years ago. Um, okay. Took a while to get their trust. Yeah. Um, but I get that question often enough whether I can recommend someone. And uh, I always say children should not be taught, they should play, depending mm -hmm. on the age of the child. And of course, there might be children that are already kind of focused on, on, an adult way of learning, uh, unfortunately, yeah, because I really think a child should play and uh, should enjoy the learning process more than just sitting in front of a computer screen or playing a stupid game, play with them in person, just make them develop, discover the love for the language rather than trying to put them into something that um, is a kind of an achievement cycle, you yeah? know, don't make yeah. them achieve things. It's, it's such a it's such an intimate process to learn a language and uh, for children more than for adults so my, my strongest recommendation if you have a tutor get someone who really does it because they enjoy it and they love it and they they connect with the child on, on a heart level and not just on a brain level but from my own experience and uh, yeah that also is a nice thing to do with adults but um, adults can also learn in different ways I can actually, I'm, I'm not an expert myself, but I do have in the polyglot community many friends who are really great experts. And I would actually, if you are a parent and you want to um, raise your children in a um, multilingual environment, um, it's, I think, very helpful to exchange your experiences, your opinions on that with other parents. I would highly recommend you to um, watch the videos that uh, my friend Tetsu makes. I'm going to leave it here in, in the chat. It's Ask Tetsu and uh, his children speak five languages and I, like at a very, very, very high level. I can't check their Japanese or their Mandarin, but um, definitely their French, English and Spanish is amazing. Um, I'm going to leave this here in the chat if you like it. Wow, thank you. Yeah, Aurélie also wrote um, in the chat that her children love to learn Deutsch. It's like a game for them. And it's like chess, actually. For me, it's das wie ein Schachspiel. It's like playing chess. <laughs> Maybe I would like to add, like very often you hear from uh, people who come here to Germany and send their children to German kindergarten or, um, yeah, special kindergarten. 
and they're surprised by how quickly they actually learn German. That's because they are with other kids, they are integrated, they are like they hear the language all the time. And um, then sometimes they say adults don't learn that fast, but it's because these children's, uh, children are exposed much more to German than adults who maybe work in an English speaking environment or yeah, who don't have the language around them as much as these young children do. So yeah, it really helps um, to, to simply integrate these children and, and to have them play with other children. That's Very good. nice. Yeah. yeah, that's a great uh, tip for sure. Okay, so let's do the next question. Now it's a bit less about language. I would like to ask a question about culture. And I'm very curious to hear what Yid has to say about it. But the question is, you can cover your camera. Did you ever have a culture shock? A culture shock. Have you been to a different country or you met a different culture and you were so surprised by how different it is? Yid, <laughs> your answer is yes. Yes, of course. I, uh, I think Germany has own, <laughs> own culture. Um, I was, I'm here for five years, but I'm coming from Turkey and Asian side of Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was night, uh, it was not a um, culture shock, but it was a shock about weather. It was, mm -hmm. really yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it was really hard to use. Um, um, but it's really important for, um, for everyone, the weather. It's part of the culture, maybe maybe you may think it's not part of the culture, but the weather affects all the daily life of people. Uh, it's really important. If you come to Germany from um, Asian side or from a hot country, you have to be careful. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. I totally understand that. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, the emotions, everything. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Your routines, your emotions, your daily lives. It's uh, it may affect through the weather. Weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Um, how about you, Michael? Your answer was yes as well. Where did you have a culture shock? Yeah, I was actually just realizing that I very likely have regular culture shocks <laughs> here in Berlin. Okay. Um, it's such a crazy city, at least uh, in my perception. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I also was wondering what is a culture shock, right? So it's, yeah. uh, it's a bit tricky. I, I remember something I struggled a lot with being in Turkey for half a year, uh, I, but I, I simply was not open enough to deal with the differences between the cultures. So um, I think that was my biggest problem with that. I spent two years in Poland and um, I saw it rather as an adventure and I didn't feel the culture shock there. Mm -hmm. And maybe I was also expecting the differences rather. I, I, of course I expected differences between Turkish and culture and German culture, but um, yeah, difficult. It's a difficult thing to, um, to deal with, it's, um, yeah. But it, it has to do with openness for, for the world to be different than, than what I think it should be. Yeah. 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 I also think it's about um, to be open, maybe to know the more you know about the other culture, you won't be surprised, you won't have a shock. Um, but sure, if you go to a different country, you don't know much about the culture, and suddenly everyone is talking differently and maybe you um, feel that it's rude or you don't understand what this means but just because it's different in your culture than in their culture um, doesn't mean that they mean the same thing right it's just um, yeah two cultures um, encounter each other how about you Sophia <laughs> my cultural shock in Germany was eating raw meat I oh like Hackepeter and yeah so. <laughs> exactly i still do not understand it yeah i also don't understand that <laughs> nice okay how about you anya um i've had so many uh culture shocks i think um 
And I think it's just also part of the process, right? So whenever you move to a new country, I've done that so many times in my life and you have this uh, learning curve, right? Um, adaptation curve. So basically you start and, and you're like the happiest pers person on earth and thinking like, oh, wow, everything is incredible and everything is new and, and same for language learning actually. And then after usually a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you'd be like, no, why? Why is that different? Why is it not the way I'm used to it? And, and so after that then starts uh, the part that is called uh, adaptation. And then, yeah, I've uh, had a Mexican uh, partner for five years, uh, definitely also in relationships. This can be really hard, uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. cultural differences, but it's also interesting and, and uh, you definitely learn a lot from that experience, yeah. I agree, yeah. Uh Nice. How about you, Juliane? What was your answer? Was it yes or no? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I just had to think a little while. But um, maybe I could um, name some things for Brazil because I know this country quite well because my husband is Brazilian. Um, so there are positive culture shocks, I think, and there are some negative culture shocks. Um, definitely positive ones are how open and welcoming people are in Brazil and how the family sticks together there. Like here in Germany, um, it would be really strange to have your parents at a party with your friends mm -hmm. and in brazil this is super common to have the parents there they are really well integrated there are birthday parties there are all types of parties and the parents are there and and the the, the aunts and, and the whole family is there you know and it's not strange um yeah and um well negative culture shock maybe is that in brazil um people have to be much more careful in relation to um crime like for example houses have a big wall or big fence um in front of the garden and in germany everything is really open mm -hmm. so um yeah these are some some examples yeah <laughs> they're all positive and negative culture shocks always yeah yeah that's a good point a culture shock doesn't necessarily have to be negative right it can be you're so surprised because everyone is so friendly and welcoming suddenly very nice and michael was frowning when um Juliana said it's uncommon to invite a parent <laughs> would you disagree <laughs> well observed <laughs> no, I, I just imagine my parents being at a party with my friends. We had that as well when I was younger. They were there on my birthday party or something, but a normal party, no. Why? No. But I think it depends on what relationship you have to your parents. Yeah. Right. My, mine is maybe a little bit more distant than other people's relationship. So mm -hmm. it, it might happen in Germany. What do I know? But um, <laughs> not, not in my. You in can't my speak for the whole country, right? <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Okay, uh, with a look on the clock, we have a few more minutes. Let's do another question. I would say this is a last chance for you guys. If you have questions, write them in the chats now, uh, in the chat now. And yeah, do I have one more question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but actually we don't need a paper for that. <laughs> so I have a question for you all. And the question is, um, do you have a tip for all German learners watching right now, or maybe people that learn, move to Germany, um, that just get to know the culture. So if you have to share one tip with them, what would be your most valuable tip to make it easy for them, to make it yeah, as flawless as possible? And whoever wants to start, feel free. <laughs> yeah, Sophia. Hey, my advice would be learn German every day. Mm -hmm. that's the thing you will make the master there's, there's no mm -hmm. other way to learn any language so the consistency like every day don't stop don't study for a month and have a six month break yeah. it's all right just keep going yep very nice yeah eat <laughs> um, um, my advice is actually be patient mm -hmm. love German if you don't love the language it's uh, it may be hard and um, don't learn just from books. Okay. On the streets, it will be better. Mm -hmm. Like talk to natives or to people that are fluent, see how they order in a restaurant, for example, don't just learn it. Okay. okay. Nice. Um, I would say be uh, clear on your motivation. What's your motivation to learn German? And always keep that in mind when you're learning. Don't be too strict on yourself. Um, always remember 
learning a language takes time. So you cannot expect to learn it, like to, to speak fluent, fluently after two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, enjoy it. Have fun. Don't, yeah, don't be too strict on yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Aurelie also says, um, nach und nach, step by step, right? Genau. It takes time. It doesn't come on one day. Who wants next? Hey, well, you go, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I can just uh, chime in to Juliane. So don't take this whole thing so seriously and don't take yourself so seriously. Uh, mm -hmm. That leads to unnatural expectations, which lead to suffering. Yeah. And look at your expectations and, you know, see, see it as an adventure, as a discovery, which is what it is. And I understand there's pressure from the outside world. So, you know, it's, it's a multifaceted adventure it's crazy it's it's painful at times it's joyful orgiastic it's everything so um don't miss just just take it as what it is it's it's a gift to be able to learn a language especially german one of the most beautiful languages out there so just enjoy the journey and at times don't enjoy it's <laughs> fine yeah, my advice uh, is uh, goes to what Sophia said, but that I see it a little, little uh, different. So I wouldn't say uh, learn German every day because sometimes, especially if you don't live in in the country, then it's just sometimes life doesn't allow us to practice the language every day, and I think that's okay. But I think you should be strict with yourself if you really want to learn the language and not and really achieve something within the next one or two years my rule of thumbs is always don't ever let pass more than three days without working on it so it's fine if there's i don't know your mom's birthday and and you just really can't do anything on a monday and then on tuesday you're just tired from whatever but then we need try to do at least something on wednesday so never more not more than three days without german that's usually my rule nice. of thumb yeah, and it's also a good uh, tip because if you can't do it on one day so that you're not frustrated and think, okay, now I didn't study every day, it's over. Um, keep going, try to do it. Yeah, whatever feels, uh, yeah, whatever fits your schedule. Um, my tip for you guys is um, my favorite tip. Just don't be afraid of doing mistakes because I, m most people I talk to that learn German, they are, or many of them, they are really afraid of doing a mistake. They are afraid of being judged by a native a German speaker or someone that is very fluent and think like they are really afraid of doing a mistake, um, but you really don't have to because it's part of the progress and it's do as many mistakes as you can, especially at the beginning because people will correct you um, or you can try to fix these mistakes, but if you don't do them, uh, you won't get better and you really just have to speak, to learn, um, and it's part of it. It's okay. Like I also do many mistakes still in English and it's fine. I can communicate um, and that's okay, I think. So really don't be afraid and just, I loved how you said it, enjoy, have fun learning the language. That's what it's all about. Um, yeah, and I think it was a really wonderful round. Uh, thank you everyone for watching and for the comments. Many people write in the chat. Thank you for everyone being here. I hope you found the name um, or the uh, home pages. I also shared mine. If you want to see my social media, it's um, Lerne Deutsch. Also, the others wrote it. If not, you can maybe write it again in the chat if you are interested to learn. Um, more with this great people here. Also, um, Expo Lingua, yeah, Ekaterina just shared a link again. Um, and you also can participate in a giveaway. So there was a link before. So definitely check out what you can do there and you can watch all the nice other events. The Expo Lingua is still going on. So don't uh, just go yet. And yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Steffi. Thank you. 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 Thank you.